Hey there, YouTube fam. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to another edition of the Lost Ones of History. So, we're here in a special place today. This is called Canyon of the Ancients, and I got something really cool to show you. So, the ancient Native American people called the Anazazi and inhabited this area from 200 AD to 1150 AD. So for a thousand years, they were called Lords of the Southwest. Um, they ruled this area. They ruled the Four Corners area from northern New Mexico, northern Arizona, southern Utah, and uh, southern Colorado. And it's the whole Four Corners area. And uh, it's thought that the Anazazi are the, um, um, the Navajo and Ute are actually descendants of the Anazazis. So these are the ancient people that were here way long ago. This, this was like back in, you know, biblical times. So we are here, and they sure did pick a pretty place up here on the ridge, I can tell you. So I'm just going to point out a few features. This mountain range over here, that's the La Plata Mountains. And these, here, step forward a little. There's these mesas over here, that's where Mesa Verde is, y'all, where the cliff dwellings are. You can Google Mesa Verde, these beautiful cliff dwellings carved into the mountains. And uh, it's believed that the Mesa Verde people were descendants of these Anazazi people. So I got something really cool to show you y'all. Come over here and check this out. Beautiful day here in Southwest Colorado, guys. We are just blessed to be in such a beautiful area. But take a look at this. Look at this guy. This is called the Dominguez Pueblo. And you know, they call it Dominguez Pueblo because the Spanish uh, settlers that first came to the area, they excavated this site. So they named it Dominguez after the Spanish settler, uh, settlers in the area. I'm sure the Native Americans um, don't agree with that name. Um, but this is, that Anaza this is an Anazazi dwelling right here. Also known as the Dominguez dwelling um, so a little bit about this area the Dominguez Pueblo and Escalana Pueblo were both built and occupied by ancestral Pueblo people during the AD 1120s imagine their world as they saw and understood it during this area as some communities grew while others declined note the details of each settlement so these were the rooms where obviously the families lived and I think the upper echelon of society, the royalty. But this is so cool guys because usually they have this stuff roped off and you can't go in but you're allowed to come in these. So this is like Chaco, Chaco Canyon, Chaco culture is what they call it. Um, it all kind of derived from this from these people the Anazazi and this is their like spiritual room where they did their um, praying to the gods but I know these rooms were their special rooms they're called kivas and um, it's just you can feel the energy in here guys I can't believe this place is still um, still up and not crumbling to pieces They've done a good job preserving it. So humans have been a part of this landscape for at least 12,000 years. Changes in cultural life over time range from hunting and gathering to farming. By about AD 750, farmers, now known as ancestral Puebloans, occupied a widespread area that included Canyon of the Ancients and much of southwest Colorado. Their year-round villages began as clustered pit houses. Over time, these ancestors of the modern-day Pueblo Indians developed larger masonry homes with connecting walls above ground. Some of these homes were built at canyon heads, uh, like this one, where there was a population growth and spring to supply water. Soil exhaustions and changing weather compromised the area's natural resources. By about A.D. 1300, these Pueblo ancestors migrated to New Mexico's Rio Grande Valley or farther west to where the Acuma, Laguna, 
Zuni, and Hopi people live today. You and Navajo people also used the monuments, mesas, and canyons for hunting and gathering. Remains of Hogan's, brush settlers, and wikiups tell their stories. In the 1700s, Europeans explored the area, often led by Ute guides. Today, many descendants people still live in or near the ancestral homelands. So that's really cool. But this is like, you know, to the Native Americans, uh, you know, this is a very spiritual, holy place. And uh, it's so neat that you're still allowed to just walk around in here. So the reason why it's called the Dominguez Escalane um, structures were because of the Dominguez Escalane expedition. And these are the Spanish explorers. In July 1776, a party of Spanish explorers, Father Silvestre de Escalante, with his superior Francisco Dominguez and eight others, set out from Santa Fe, New Mexico, to find a safe route to California and avoid the Mojave Desert and the Grand Canyon. After several weeks, they camped by a river called El Rio de Nuestra Señora de los Dolores, the River of Our Lady of Sorrows. Father Escalante found the remains of a village overlooking the river and remarked in his journal that it resembled the living Pueblo villages of New Mexico. As the first record of an archaeological site in present-day Colorado, it was later named Escalante Pueblo. The Dominguez Pueblo was excavated and named 200 years later. In the Dolores area, the Spaniards first encountered Ute hunters who fed them and guided the party onward for several months. Due to lack of food and the approach of winter, the explorers eventually abandoned their goal and returned to Santa Fe. Though unsuccessful, the expedition established part of the old Spanish trail for later trade between the United States and Mexican territories. So, the Utes actually guided the Native Americans when they got, or I mean, the Native Americans actually guided the Spanish when they first got to this area. And I'm sure, unfortunately, the germs of the Spanish uh, probably contributed to the demise of these cultures, which is unfortunate. Um, but the reason why we're doing a Lost One special on this, guys, is because uh, the Anazazi people just like up and disappeared one day. They said they ruled this area for a thousand years, and then all of a sudden it was like one day they up and left. And there's all kinds of theories to uh, what happened. Um, but they're blaming it on climate change now. But what's strange is it seemed like they just up and left one day. There was food in the pots. All their, They left all their stuff in the rooms. Um, it's almost like they just up and ran out one day. There was, I mean, food still found still uh, on campfires like hundreds of years later. It's crazy. Um, and another weird thing, and... A controversial thing about this place is they said that uh, there could be some cannibal activity here um, in the analyzed uh, fecal remains and in the fire pits they found human bones that were uh, cooked and you know showed that they had knife marks like they were being prepared and they would prepare them in these kivas like this and it was like a spiritual thing but it's up for debate. Um, a lot of the present day Native Americans do not like the thought that their um, ancient ancestors could have been into cannibalism. So, but I mean, if it's in the science, it is what it is. And uh, I'm just here laying out facts. So I don't, I don't think, I don't pick one side or the other on that. But it falls into the lost ones of history. Because these people inhabited this area for a thousand years and just one day disappeared. These people had no written history. Theirs was an oral system of maintaining records of ages. In the mind's eye, one sees the elders speak, their eyes alight, their gestures emphasizing or elaborating a point as they reveal the ancient record of the Pueblo people. The ancestral Pueblos of the Four Corners area included diverse groups with local styles of architecture, dress, art, and a rich culture. Today's Pueblo people live in over 20 separate communities. Their language is divided into four distinct families that are as different as Chinese and English. 
so they live on today and uh man it's just such a beautiful you can feel the positive energy up here it's amazing it's hard to think that th for a thousand years people lived here so if you like what you see today go ahead and give it a like and a thumbs up down below and please subscribe so i can keep this up uh you liking it and subscribing allows me to it gives me the want to go and find new places for you so i but i got a lot of stuff planned coming up um with search so we just got through with the jacob paddock's wheat case and um, we had to take a break we got rain out from weather and uh we successfully scanned the entire mountainside where he had disappeared and uh we're gonna go back in april but i just want to say thank you for watching and i hope you're enjoying your sunday and god bless and we'll give you one more panorama before we say goodbye If you're ever in the Dolores Cortez area you gotta come visit Canyon of the Ancients it's free it's just like a mile hike up and uh, you get to see this amazing view that many people don't get to lay their eyes on something like this thanks for watching guys we'll see, talk to you soon